Hello, hello and welcome. Welcome to the Little ICAC podcast. Uh, Today is Monday the 7th of October and I'm coming to you from Derby in the UK. This is a knitting and crochet podcast but today's going to be a little bit different because I'm going to tell you all about my experience at Yarndale last weekend. So Yarndale, if you don't know, is a yarn show, quite a big yarn show in the north of England and in Yorkshire. Uh, It's in a small town called Skipton in Yorkshire, which is a beautiful town. I absolutely recommend if you've never been there to uh, take a visit. Absolutely lovely uh, actual town itself. And then the yarn show takes place just outside the town in um, a uh, agricultural market. I was gonna say cattle market, but it's not, it's sheep and agricultural market place. Um, So yes, um, so if you are a regular viewer, You'll know that the last couple of years when I've been to Yarndale, I've done a whole little vlog about it. I've filmed um, maybe some of the journey up to Yarndale. I've filmed lots of stalls there. That didn't happen this year. And there's a reason that didn't happen. And it's this. And it's this. So if you, and I don't know what you can see because I'm filming this slightly differently today. If you follow me on Instagram, you will perhaps have seen a post I put up two weeks ago with me with my arm in a sling because I actually slipped at work a couple of weeks ago, went down on my elbow and have broken my elbow, broken my, um, uh, what bone is it, the radius. Um, I have broken, fractured the bone just up here. Um, I'm not in a sling all the time anymore, which is good. Um, I am wearing my sling when I'm walking around out and about because it just helps support it. But I don't need to wear the sling um, around the house or when I'm just sitting down. Sometimes what I do is put a cushion under my um, elbow if it needs a little bit of support. So anyway, it's going to be relatively slow to heal, potentially six weeks or so. We're now two weeks in. The pain is quite sore and severe at times and in fact I'm just looking at my watch thinking oh, I should have taken some painkillers before I started filming this <laughs> um but you know fingers crossed I'm back at the fracture clinic again tomorrow for a third x-ray and at the moment they're saying that they're, they're not um planning on operating um so fingers crossed it will heal well without the need for surgery or anything like that so anyway, what has that meant for me? So I did still go to Yarndale. Um, I wasn't driving anyway. I was dr- going with friends. Somebody else was driving. And to be honest, um, although I was in quite a lot of pain, um, I felt like I needed the distraction of still going. Uh, I wore my sling. Uh, I took it carefully and steadily. <laughs> and um, it was tiring, but I'm really pleased that I went. Um, so I obviously as well then, because I have my arm in a sling and the way things were, I didn't film anything. Um, I may have a few snippets of video that I can put in because uh, I have asked my friends who went if they can send me any little snippets of video. And I will just try and put up a few little snippets and photographs maybe at the end. Um, but there's lots of yarn there videos that you can see. I'm sure that people have put on where you can see more of the stalls and the stands, etc. So instead, I'm going to show you what I bought at Yarndale today. And the other reason why that's going to be different is I'm not going to show you uh, what I have knitted on recently because uh, last time my podcast was three weeks ago. So the week between filming that podcast and breaking my arm, I did do a usual amount of knitting. Um, But since I've broken my arm, I wouldn't... It's not that there's been no knitting, but there's been a very reduced amount of knitting. I have now reached a point where I can knit, um, but not for very long, especially not considering what I would normally, how much I would normally knit. Crochet is definitely out still at the moment because I can't turn my hand this way like that. I can kind of do that with my hand and I can move my arm like that, but I can't turn my hand over and I can't crochet. But with knitting, I found that if I've got a pillow under my arm, I don't actually move my arm very much. And I'm the way I knit, I'm a thrower, not a continental knitter. It's just this movement, really moving my finger back and forth. So um, so I can knit for a little while, then take a break 
and then knit look for a little while. So I have done a little bit of knitting the last uh, week or so um, and hopefully in two weeks time I will podcast again and hopefully by then I will have knitted a bit more and I will have stuff to show you or more stuff to show you. So this week, uh, this episode is just going to be showing you what I bought at Yarndale. Um, I didn't buy masses and masses of yarn, especially not compared to last year. Um, I bought a lot of yarn last year, but I did buy quite a lot of things. I bought a few patterns and I definitely want to show you. So if you're interested to see what I bought at Yarndale, then stay here. Okay. This is not going to be in any particular order other than just the order it comes out of the bag. <laughs> All right, so the first thing I'm going to show you is not yarn um, or a pattern, uh, but it is the cutest, cutest travel mug. Now, how adorable is this? Last year, um, when I went to Yarndale, one of my friends that I was with, Jane, bought a travel mug with a unicorn on it um, from the same store. And this is from Siobhan's Crafts. And I thought it was absolutely adorable. And I went back to the store and they didn't have, well, they had a few travel mugs left, but none of the designs that I particularly liked. So this year I went to Siobhan's Crafts um, stand as one of the first stands I went to. And she'd got, I don't know, seven or eight different designs of travel mugs. Lots of, a um, couple of unicorn ones, a couple of dragons. Um, trying to think what else there were. Just sort of, anyway. But this was the one that I really, really liked. Thought it was so cute. And on a Thursday, I go to a knitting group in town. And we meet at Starbucks. And sit in Starbucks and, and knit. And Starbucks have a policy that if you take your own mug, you get, I think, it's about 25p off your drink. So this is now my knit, a knitting group mug. And uh, I did go on Thursday last week. Um, again, I didn't really do much in the way of knitting. Did a little bit of knitting. Um, but I took that with me. And the it was just nice to sort of sit and uh, talk to other people. And the um, barista, one of the baristas who works at Starbucks... Uh, his name is Jakob. He's a lovely, lovely, lovely chap. He thought my mug was gorgeous and he was showing it to all the other baristas going, look at this, look at this. So, yeah, that was the first thing I bought. Um, but obviously it is yarn related because this dragon is hoarding yarn. Um, so, yeah, so that was from Siobhan's Crafts. I did buy some other bits from Siobhan's Crafts, which I will pull out of the bag at some point. <laughs> right. This then, the next thing. This was one of the first things I saw, actually. This was a stand quite near the entrance that I went into. And she had kits for, I think it was pretty much all for um, colour work, mittens and fingerless mitts. I don't think, maybe there were hats on there. I don't know. But I was drawn to the mitts and the fingerless mitts. And it's kind of colour work, almost sort of like Scandinavian style. Although I think she's called Baltic Knits. And she had um, a sample of these beautiful fingerless mitts, which had this pattern on it. I hope you can see that okay. Which um, has got little thistles and then mostly white or cream with little dots on. So uh, actually there may be, there we go, thistles, fingerless mittens. So it's from a company called Baltic Knits and um, it comes with, obviously with the pattern and then, yeah, got the chart there. Here's the yarn. I'm not really sure, it's four ply. Uh, I'm not sure what breed of sheep it is. It does smell quite sheepy has to say, I have to say, it smells very sheepy. It's definitely a rusticy kind of yarn, but beautiful colours. Obviously, we've got a dark purple, a light purple, a green and two grey, which as far as I can tell are the same. And yeah, came with a pattern. It was £20, which I really did not think was bad for a kit like this and I am looking forward to knitting those. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you, this is a pattern from a designer who I saw at 
Buxton. <laughs> when I went to Buxton Wool Show in May, I saw this designer and actually on my Buxton video, um, that I filmed her stall then. I would say I'll show you that, but I tend to delete a lot of the video after I've used it on podcasts because otherwise my phone um, can't hold all, all the memory. So she's called Knitterish Designs and I went and had a look and she had got, and I don't think she had this pattern in May. I could be wrong, but she didn't think she did either, but at, at um, Buxton. So it's for actually for a dress. Now I wish I'd taken a picture because um, the picture, well, I say I wish I'd taken a picture and then I'm going to say this picture doesn't really do it justice. Hope you can see that. But she'd got obviously the sample dress on the stall and I thought it was really, really lovely. And um, I've got a couple of patterns for dresses that I want to make. So it is for by yarn, so that could be a bit of a mistake. <laughs> but um, I then was, I went on the search for some yarn for this and I needed four or five skeins of a main colour. So I was thinking, Maybe I would dye that myself if I couldn't find anything at, at Yarndale. I wasn't sure that necessarily I wanted or that I could stretch to five skeins of hand dyed yarn. That was going to use pretty much most of my budget if I did that. So I was just having a look and I thought if need be, maybe I'll use commercial yarn for the main colour and just use hand dyed for the um, colour work. And it's mosaic, by the way, the, the colour work. Or, um, or, I would dye something for myself when I um, when my arm was better. But I went to, um, what are they called? Woolly Knits, which do a lot of stuff on cones, you may have seen on other podcasts. Um, but they had this merino hanging up. They were 200 gram skeins of 100% merino. It won't be super washed, so I'll have to remember that. So I bought two 200 gram skeins because... The meterage, they said, I'm trying to remember what they said now, 420, no, it's more than that, it's more like 470 metres per 100 grams. So it should work out enough. So it's in this grey lilac colour, very much my sort of colour, and they say it's 100% merino, and I don't know why I keep smelling the arm. Um, so that was a really good price because how much was it? I think it was the two skeins was £30 or £35. Might have been £35 for the two 200 gram skeins. So I thought that was a very reasonable way. So then I went off looking for minis and I needed seven minis to do the colour work on here. Seven 20 gram minis. And I was going around and I couldn't find anything, any colours that were really standing out to me. And also some of the minis were sort of five pounds, five pounds fifty per mini, 20 grams. Seemed a little bit high to me. <laughs> um, and I just wasn't sure. But then I went, came across a stall called Wee County Yarns. Which is Wee County, isn't it? Yeah, Wee County Yarns, not Country. Wee County Yarns. And they do little 10 gram minis for colour work. Um, and it's not merino. I think it's more like Shetland wool. And they do little, then they have like a pick and mix wall. And it's brilliant for like, if you want to do colour um, col work, fair isle, um, mittens, scarves, hats, etc. Or you just need a few. So I picked out colours that I thought would go with this. And I went with sort of like heathery type tones. Now, I don't know how well you can see this, and I'm sorry for the rustling, but obviously they put it in this lovely bag, which is great because you can see the colours beautifully. I do like that. Um, and I just think that those are going to go really nicely with this. And these were only £1.25 for 10 grams, so it worked out at £2.50 for 20 grams, which was definitely the best value Um so I'm really pleased with those colours and all of them. I held all of them separately against this and I think it's going to go really, really nicely. You see, I'm moving. Although I can move this arm quite well, I just have to remember how I can move this arm. <laughs> and I also have to remember not to try and pick up anything heavy with it.
Okay, hope you can still see me all right. <laughs> what have I got next to show you? Right, so next is the other bits that I bought at Siobhan's. Well, sort of. So one of the reasons why I wanted to go to Siobhan Crafts early on was because she had posted on Instagram the day before that she had done some mystery bags. And I do love a mystery bag. And her mystery bags were £20 and they included a full 100 gram skein of yarn, a really cute bag, which I will show you, and then other mystery goodies. So this is the bag that it came in. How cute is that? Absolutely adorable. It says Yarndale 2024. Really cute little pick. See, moved my arm slightly differently there. Um, anyway, yeah, so really cute little picture on the front. And then, so the 100 gram skein I got from Siobhan in the mystery bag was this one. <laughs> Uh, the colourway is Belle and it is sock yarn, 100 grams and it's 85% Polworth wool and 15% nylon. And I think that is going to be a pair of funky socks, if I'm honest. I think that's what that's going to be. So I wouldn't say they're definitely like my colours, but they're very much kind of colours that you get from Siobhan and do like them and I think they would make a funky pair of socks and maybe maybe there'll be a pair of socks for my daughter rather than for me um I also got lots of goodies within that bag aha here we are so it also came with this bag inside it yes I really do need all this yarn absolutely so that was inside the mystery bag and then uh some stickers now i also got some stickers in another mystery bag so i'm not 100 percent certain which stickers came with which plus also i swapped a couple of stickers with somebody else so we're going to say that these are the stickers that came um with the siobhan bag so we've got this cute little basket of yarn this says yarned and dangerous Just a little ball of yarn with kind of like a heartbeat. And then this little gonk or gnome knitting. Um, so there were some stitch markers as well, which will be around somewhere. So when we find the stitch markers, I'll show you those. But separately from the mystery bag, I also bought this set of stitch markers from Siobhan, which are Alice in Wonderland themed. Can you see those? So they're absolutely adorable. You've got Alice, the Mad Hatter, Alice's dress, um, the mouse, is it Dormouse? Uh, a little toadstool, a teapot and a white rabbit and a, the Cheshire cat. I'm trying to take the lid off so you can see them a little bit better. They're absolutely adorable. I've not taken these out yet, actually. So here's her dress. Here is Alice herself. Teapot. So they're just absolutely gorgeous and I couldn't resist those as a set of stitch markers. Uh, So they were also from Siobhan's Crafts. Okay, so it's definitely not all in order, but it doesn't really matter, does it? Uh, I have no idea what's in here. Ah, right, these were as on a stand, again, that I saw right at the beginning, and then uh, I really liked these buttons, but I didn't buy them till right till the end. I was like, oh, I must remember, go back and get those buttons, which I did. So these are from a company called Ethel and Joan and uh, they are hand cast resin and they are, surprise, surprise, pinky purple. And I just thought they were really lovely, really pretty. And as I say, they were one of the first things I saw and they were just in my mind all the way uh, all weekend. So I went back and got those. Okay, what else is in here? Ah, yes. Well, 
if you've been following me on Instagram as well, you'll see that I really haven't had the best of luck the last few weeks. Um, so three weeks ago, I filmed the podcast on the Saturday or the Sunday morning even. And then I was driving up to Leeds to take my eldest daughter up to university, full car. And we got up to her uh, accommodation and I was trying to find a parking space. And I reversed into a gate, smashed my boot and smashed the rear windscreen of my car. And what's that got to do with what I bought at Yonder? Well, on the back of my car, I had a sticker, a car sticker, which looks like this. I'll put a um, photo. And obviously then um, I've had it repaired. Not that I can drive at the moment anyway, because of my arm, but I had it repaired. And so I went to the stand Tilly Flop Designs and bought a second, uh, a new car sticker. Um, which I now can't find, but I also bought from her. I'm sure it's in here somewhere. Um, but I also bought from her Tilly Flop Designs. She does these lovely bands that you can put around. If you hand it a pair of socks as a gift for somebody, you um, can put these round them. Um, and she has some really lovely designs. So we've got, there is no such thing as too many hand knit socks. Uh, look surprised. These are for you. That one says, you are totally worth every single one of the 42,200 stitches in these socks. And I've put my heart into these for your souls. So that's uh, one set. And then I got another set, which were more sort of like Christmas uh orientated so these ones say for the fest for the best of festive feet you are again you're totally worth 42,200 stitches but you've got like um snowflakes in the background and then on this side these aren't just any socks these are hand knit with love socks and the last one's a pair of socks it's not just for christmas you can wear them all year round in the uk so I bought those two sets of sock mans and somewhere in here, hopefully, is the car sticker, although it might be um, in the hallway ready for me to go and put it back on my car. But anyway, as I say, I would have put a photo up of the car sticker. Um, right. OK, so then, as you may know, I have been doing a bit of a challenge this year to use up some of my self-striping sock yarn. But I do love self-striping sock yarn. So I did buy a bit more. Um, and one uh, maker that stand, stood out for me with their self-striping sock yarn is Dragon Hill Studio. And I'm going to be honest and say I couldn't choose between two really, really beautiful, stripy, sparkly sock yarns. So I bought them both. <laughs> so this one, the colourway name is Purple Sparkling Broccoli, which I just love that name. Look at that. Now, I think I'm going to do the same thing as I did this year. I think I'm actually going to wrap up uh, 12 balls of yarn again and open them each month because I have enjoyed that. So I think that is going to go into next year's Stripey Sock Challenge. And then the second one is called Pink Dahlia. And it's that one. And again, it's also sparkling. But I just couldn't choose between the two and I kept looking at them and I was like, I'm going to have them both. And actually what I also thought, not that I ever make scrappy socks, but I thought I could make a pair from that, a pair from that and then do a second pair or a third pair where I combine the two, which would be really pretty as well. So we shall see if that ever happens. OK, right. And there was another stripy one that I got. So Yarndale have a partnership with West Yorkshire Spinners. And most years, I want to say every year, but I think last year they didn't have one. But most years they have a, um, a sock yarn designed by West Yorkshire Spinners, especially for Yarndale. And it's always, the name of it is always the name of a, an actual sheep from somewhere around Skipton, I think. Um, and so this was the bag for this year. Um, 
and I've just bought the little drawstring bag. And this is the colour for this year's Yarndale sock, and it is called Brenda. And isn't she lovely? And so this is the Brenda bag. And yeah, so that is Brenda. So I bought her. She will get wrapped up to go into next year's um, into next year's um, sock making as well. Aha! I have found the car sticker just to prove that I did buy a new one. <laughs> right. Okay. What else we got in here? Ah, so. There was a stall called Woolly Top or Wool Tops, and they had some beautiful soft yarn. Uh, they had some Falklands Merino, but they also had this one, which is a combination of Falkland Merino and Alpaca. And I've bought enough here to make a sweater, um, a colourwork sweater. And I have picked the sweater pattern that I'm going to do. It's called Lorien, and hopefully I'll put a picture here of it. And these are the colours that I'm going to be using. So I've got three skeins of the dark, and that will be kind of like my main colour. And then I've got these two for the colour work. And absolutely beautiful and a really, really good price. So look, this one is Whitbarrow Alpaca with Merino from the Lake District. So the, yeah, so super fine alpaca and Falklands Merino. So I think the alpaca is from the Lake District and the Merino is Falklands uh, with Mulberry Silk as well. So what percentage is it? 40? Okay, right, no. So I think it's spun and dyed in the um, alpaca. Uh, spun and dyed in the uh, Lake District. Right, so this one is 45% Peruvian alpaca, 35% Falklands Merino wool, 20% mulberry silk. Uh, 100 grams, so 400 metres. Uh, so it's from Town End Yarns, townendalpacas.co.uk. So now I'm wondering, anyway, who knows? Um, and this colourway is Whitbarrow Grape. Absolutely beautiful. And this colourway is Whitbarrow Teasel. And it's like a grey lilac. And then this is a, a like a pale pink. This is Whitbarrow Orchid. So I'm really excited to do this colour work jumper uh, add it to the list <laughs> um, okay and then I also went to Rosie from Rosie's Moments and she had some little mystery bags that were just mini skein mystery bags so I bought one of her mini skein mystery bags and Rosie's, Rosie's Moments, her mystery bag, she always packs them full of things. This was the mini skein, which I'm actually thinking I haven't got, could potentially go with the uh, Siobhan's Craft, actually. Hang on, let's see if I can find that again. <clears throat> so it's possible that I'll put that. I'm not sure yet, though. So that was the yarn I got though, the mini skein, mystery mini skein. And then in Rosie's uh, mystery bag, there was also this ribbon. There was this tin. Now, not everything in this tin was from her mystery bag. Some of it was from um, <coughs> Siobhan Craft, but these are the things that were definitely from Rosie's moments. Got two uh, little tags, handmade with love. A big needle, darning needle, very useful. Some little buttons that also say handmade with love. <coughs> Excuse me. Some light bulb stitch markers. Now, tape measure. I am now thinking the tape measure might have been in the Siobhan's Crafts one. I can't remember. A couple of stickers. I've got yarn for that one. 
and I think that stitch marker was also from uh, Rosie's Moments and two bigger two bigger buttons okay then these stitch markers were from oh no hang on I think that was from Rosie's Moments as well and then the rest of these stitch markers were from the Siobhan's Crafts so I've got that I'm going to swap arms because just lifting these up at that angle. That little flower. Little heart. Strawberry. It's like a little uh, gumball machine type. <laughs> and a uh, cute little cat in a rowing boat. <laughs> So, oh, and there's this one as well. It's more like a keyring, that one. So, yes, yeah, so I've got a whole little horde of stitch markers, buttons, um, goodies here for my mystery bags. But Rosie from Rosie's Moments also does a fabulous, oh, hang on, what else we've got? Coffee, some washi tape, so... Rosie from Rosie Moments does a fabulous deal where you can get uh, a bag like this, which is very cute, uh, which contains uh, uh, two patterns plus a skein of 100 gram yarn, 100 gram yarn um, for £18. I don't know how she does it. I really don't know how she does it. So, ooh. so this was the skein of yarn that I got from her. Um, which is Superwash Falklands Merino, 75% um, Merino, 25% Nylon. And then the patterns that I got, well, I ended up with three patterns because Rosie is lovely and I've met her a few times when I've been selling and so she let me have a third pattern. <laughs> so we've got Jackson's First Christmas, which is a shawl pattern. Um, and then we also have the Lavender Bud Socks. And then we also have uh, In the Beginning, very simple shawl there as well. So we've got three patterns and the skein of yarn and the bag <laughs> for £18, which is just a crazy price, really. But thank you very much, Rosie. And um, I think that is it. I think that's it. That is all my yarn, all, all my goodies from Yarndale this year. Um, I did bump into some people. Uh, I saw Karen from Stitches and Jacks. I saw Kelly from Roro and Cades. Um, I saw some lovely customers like Suzanne and um, Heather. And I can't remember everybody's names. Um, but it was lovely to, to, to meet all of those people and quite a few people stopped me and said hello. I was wearing my floozy cardigan and there was a lovely lady on one of the stands. Now, which stand was she on? It wasn't Siobhan's Crafts. Oh, was it? I think it was Snuggle Bums. Um, and she stopped me and spoke to me and she was knitting the floozy cardigan and said that was based on um, seeing it on my podcast. So that was really lovely. Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, so I'm really sorry that I can't remember people's names. Um, I was taking a lot of painkillers that weekend and, and I was very, very tired. But uh, it was lovely um, to speak to lots of people and meet lots of people. And yeah, so I'm sorry that it's not a proper Yarndale video with videos of the stands, etc. Um, a few bits that I have got I will put at the end or things that hopefully I've got sent through from some friends that I was there with. Um, and then just a little bit of general information. Obviously, with my arm being broken, um, I'm very limited on what I can do. 
Um, no yarn dyeing is going to happen over the next few weeks. Luckily, thank goodness, I had finished all the yarn dyeing for the advent calendars. Uh, and I had twisted all the mini skeins. All the mini skeins were done and sorted. But I hadn't finished twisting all of the 100 gram skeins. And I hadn't uh, actually packed things into boxes. So my amazing friend Kate, and I've just got to say a massive thank you to her. She is knit knit book on Instagram if you want to follow her. Uh, but my amazing friend Kate came over and finished winding the skeins for me and uh, helped pack all the boxes for me. And then my husband as well, Mr. Lycak, also helped pack up some of the boxes and um, um, taken them to the... Um, post office for me and without those two um well the advents were going to be very behind so i have to say a massive massive thank you to both of them for the work they have done for me while i am incapacitated um but hopefully hopefully we're all good i've got a show at the end of november and i'm really hoping that my arm will be healed by then my husband has also offered to help um with any dying that i need to do and things which uh, we're going to leave for a number of weeks anyway. Uh, I have been signed off work, so I'm not going to do anything that is potentially going to um, cause any more problems with my arm. And uh, But fingers crossed, fingers crossed, we, we should be okay for that show at the end of November. Um, luckily, as I say, because I've been dying advents, I've been dying up stock and things at the same time anyway, uh, things that haven't gone into the shop. So uh, onto the Etsy shop. So fingers crossed. Um, yeah. Okay. So there are some four week advents still left in the Etsy shop. If anybody would like those, uh, they are packed up and ready to go. And also the Halloween yarn. I'm just going to quickly say the Halloween yarn is on sale at the moment, 25% off until the end of October. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about the shop. Cause as I say, I can't really do very much with that anyway, at the moment, honestly, so frustrating uh, but hopefully i will see you in a couple of weeks where i will show you what i have knitted and i will do the draw then for um the next uh winners for the sock along the um socks in you know it make along i will do the draw then and i have just about finished my september socks i only finished them yesterday because obviously um they got left <laughs> when i um um, couldn't knit but I had nearly finished those so I've managed to get those finished so I'll show all of that in the next podcast where hopefully um, I would have been able to have got some more knitting done and I'll show you what we've got then thank you for watching bye for now <laughs>